This is part two on 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 to 17. But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, loved by the Lord, because God chose you from the beginning for salvation. That's where we stopped last time. God does not, in this choosing from the beginning, from before the foundation of the world, based on an eternal electing love, God does not leave to chance how this salvation comes about. How? And he says here, we are chosen for salvation through two things, sanctification of the Spirit and through faith or belief in the truth. There's no difference in Greek between the word faith and belief. There aren't two words, there's just one, pistis, faith in the truth. So, Father, as we ponder now, faith in the truth and sanctification of the Spirit as means through which we are saved forever into the presence of Christ with joy. Grant that we would understand how they work, that we would not get confused about the relationship between faith, truth, sanctification, spirit. Our lives hang on this, so teach us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. First thing to say here, I think, is if God shows you that you are chosen from the foundation of the world, don't ever say, oh, if I'm chosen by God to be saved from before the foundation of the world, then I don't need to do anything. I don't need to believe the truth. I don't need to be sanctified. So many people, when they're introduced to biblical truth, like the doctrine of election for salvation from the beginning, they start depending on their own brain instead of the Word of God to draw out implications. And there are no biblical implications to the effect that if you're chosen, you don't need to believe the truth and you don't need to be sanctified. God chose not only the persons to be saved, the persons, the end, he chose the means through sanctification. There isn't any other way into salvation at the end of the age and eternal life in the kingdom of God. There isn't any other way than through the path, along the path of sanctification. There isn't any other way into salvation except through faith in the truth. So let's ponder each of these and their relationship, and we'll pick that up next time as well. Faith in the truth and sanctification of the Spirit are the pathways into salvation. So let's pause just a minute and review salvation. What is that a reference to? Salvation. God has not destined us for wrath, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, but to obtain salvation. So salvation is rescue from wrath through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. That's how he does it objectively. Christ dies in our place, bears our wrath so that whether we wake or alive or dead, sleep, we might live with him. So salvation negatively is deliverance from wrath and salvation positively is eternal life with Christ. And the key is objective events. And one of those key events was the death of Christ for us, that is, in our place. Here it is again in 1 Thessalonians 1. You are waiting for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. That's another one of those events that has to happen and did happen. Jesus, who delivers us, saves us, from the wrath to come. So, rescue from wrath into everlasting fellowship with Jesus is the objective accomplishment of salvation. But here the question is, 
okay, Christ has accomplished that for his people. How do we appropriate it so that we are included in that glorious rescue from wrath and fellowship with Jesus? And the answer is through sanctification of the Spirit and belief in the truth or faith in the truth. What what is this? Faith in the truth. Let's just go into the next verse for a moment. To which he called you through our gospel. So this truth here is the gospel. You can see that in the preceding verses as well. We we spend a lot of time on these. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders, with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they did not welcome a love for the truth or in order to be saved. So this is saying exactly what we're seeing now in our text. In order to be saved, you must love the truth and did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We spent a lot of time trying to show that this believing here has in it a treasuring of the truth of Christ. This is the gospel. It has in it a pleasure in the truth, not in unrighteousness. So when it says we are saved through faith in the truth, it doesn't just mean like the devil believing that the truth exists. I mean, the devil believes probably more true doctrine. That is, he's aware of it and knows it's true. He knows it's true. Faith in the truth that saves is not awareness that truth exists. It's an embrace of the truth. To use the words here, it's, it's a love for the truth. It's a pleasure in the truth. It is a change of heart that welcomes the gift of the gospel, the truth. Now, the relationship between this and this is all important. I'm going to argue, and we'll spend probably the next session on this as well, that faith in the truth is the means to sanctification of the Spirit. Spirit is the key, right? Spirit is the key to making us holy. But what do we do? What's our conscious experience of engaging the work of the Spirit on our behalf so that we are made holy? And I'm going to argue that the answer is faith. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling, in other words, sanctify you, and may fulfill, is how he does it, every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. Now, based on that phrase right there, work of faith, I'm suggesting that the work that shows us to be transformed and fit for the kingdom, that work is this sanctification, and it is a work of faith, because faith in the truth is the means by which the Spirit makes us holy. Here's one more verse to show that, and then we'll pick it up next time. Galatians 3, 5. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you which is what we desperately need, right? John Piper needs the Holy Spirit more than anything. The Spirit is my only hope for the sanctification that leads to final salvation. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law? No, is the expected answer. Or does he do it by hearing with faith? Yes, is the expected answer. Faith hears the truth, and faith embraces and rests in the truth that is heard, and the result is that the Spirit is supplied. Did you catch that? He supplies the Spirit by the hearing with faith. So when faith hears the truth, 
the Word of God, the promises of God, the gospel of God, and embraces it, delights in it, loves it, that is the Spirit's work to produce sanctification. Now, how does sanctification, how does becoming holy, how does being changed actually result from that process? That's what I want to look at briefly next time.